morning dear hearts we are on our second special central relevant thought of part two of the workbook this time it is what is salvation interesting that's what is salvation follows what is forgiveness because in truth they are synonymous and in the clarification of terms it tells us that they're forgiveness salvation at one minute atonement true perception they all mean the same thing also, please subscribe. So I'm going to read the first two paragraphs of what is salvation. I'm going to bring in some of our earlier lessons that also speak of salvation. There are nine lessons in part one of the workbook that deal with salvation. Now, salvation is mentioned in a lot of other lessons, but there are nine that it is the headed thought, the, the title, the mantra, however you, you see that. The name of the lesson includes the word salvation. So um, salvation is a promise. It's a promise that we have been given by God and it is a guaranteed promise because all of God's promises are guaranteed. They will happen. Uh, it is the promise, the guarantee that we will find our way home. It is part of our inheritance, as is forgiveness, in that these are the ways that we remember and find our path. We have forgotten it, and these are tools that we have been given in order to rediscover what we have forgotten. It has been given to us salvation and forgiveness were given to us the moment that there was a need for either of them. Salvation is a promise made by God that you would find your way to him at last. It cannot but be kept. It will be kept. So it guarantees that time, time will have an end and all the thoughts that have been born in time will end as well. Time also occurred in that moment of madness. Before that, there was only eternity. When we have returned home, we have found our way back through God's promise, then the thought of time, the need for time, will disappear. It will no longer be required. It'll simply be laid down and we will enter into the eternal now moment. God's word is given every mind which thinks that it has separate thoughts and will replace these thoughts of conflict with the thought of peace. God's word, God's promise is given to us. We can also interpret this as this is the, the Holy Spirit has been given us. There's an amber alert in the middle of this beautiful songs. God's word is given to every mind that thinks it has separate thoughts because there is a part of our mind that believes that it is a part from God rather than being a part of God. And these separate thoughts will be replaced, these thoughts of conflict, because a separate thought is a conflicted thought, and all of them will be replaced with thoughts of peace, and thought is capitalized. So we know it is signifying the Holy Spirit, or it's our elder brother, a thought of peace that is irrefutable and has no opposite. The second paragraph says the thought of peace was given to God's son the instant that his mind had thought of war in that big bang, tiny mad idea moment. We were given the thought of peace again, the Holy Spirit. There was no need for such a thought before for peace was given without opposite and merely was. What is all-encompassing can have no opposite. And in truth, peace has no opposite, but we thought otherwise. And so in order to bring us back home, the promise that we will be brought home, where we never left, remember that, we were given 
a way, a means, a promise, a thought of peace to lead us back, and that is the Holy Spirit. So uh, for such a thought before was never, peace was without opposite and merely was. But when the mind is split, there is a need of healing. Now, I just want to mention one of the lessons in part one of the workbook is that only salvation can be said to cure. So it is the salvation that will cure, heal the mind that believes it is split. So the thought that has power to heal the split became a part of every fragment of the mind that still was one, but failed to recognize its oneness. Now it did not know itself and thought its own identity, its true identity. If you're looking at the book, it has a big eye. We thought we lost who we were. Now we have had that existential crisis of who am I? We are God's child. We are the sinless, guiltless, perfect child of God. The salvation of this world and the use of salvation and forgiveness will bring us back to the awareness of who in truth we really, truly are. I'm going to go into today's lesson 231. Father, I will but to remember you, which is exactly what where we left off said that, you know, we did not know ourselves and we did not know our identity. And now we're saying, Father, I, I will, I want to remember you. And through salvation, I will. What can I seek? The first part is the prayer. What can I seek for Father but your love? Perhaps I think I seek for something else, a something I have called by many names. Salvation, okay, love. We have called it by many names particularly salvation. We think our salvation is in this, it is in that. If we're listening to the ego, we think it's in death. Only through death can we acquire salvation. Can we come to that space of knowing and being and being at one with no more problems coming into our holy mind. Death is salvation to the ego. And I have looked at many different things presented to me by the ego and called them, called them, think that is it. I will be happy when that happens. I will be content when this happens. All of these things that I have called by many names because they, I have given them many names, none of them will ever bring me to salvation. Yet, it, back to the lesson, yet it is your love capital Y, capital L, your love, the only thing I seek or ever sought. I want the peace of God, and within the peace of God, I have God's love. For there is nothing else that I could ever really want to find. Let me remember you. Let me remember I am one with God. What else could I desire but this truth about myself? And just briefly, you know, we have that... Um, my holiness is my salvation, understanding who I am. That is my salvation. It is given me to know and to understand the truth of who I am. And through salvation, through my acceptance of salvation, that will happen. And we know from part one of the workbook and what salvation is, that the only plan that will work for all of us, all of the children, is God's plan. Only God's plan for salvation will work. The second part of the lesson, um, and this is in the text, and it, it feels like we're, we're just having a conversation now with our elder brother, with Jesus. This is your will, my brother, and you share this will with me, and with the one as well, with God as well, who is our Father. To remember him is heaven. This we seek, and only this is what will be given us to find. There is nothing else for me to find. Now, yesterday's lesson, what we completed with forgiveness was, now I will seek and find the peace of God. And today, we're continuing continuing with, and only this is what will be given us to find. We will find 
salvation. We will find our peace. We will find our way home. Salvation is an essential part to God's plan. It is God's plan. And we have been given the means to complete his plan. That's it for today. I hope it helped. Tomorrow we'll read a little bit more about what is salvation and blend it in with previous lessons, I'm sure. I don't have, a, I don't have the script written that I'm aware of. And, um, and also with uh, tomorrow's lesson 232. In the meantime, please like, please share, please subscribe, please comment, um, please pray, please go to my website, JanetWeissman.com and uh, purchase Wisdom with a Twist. Okay, uh, it's, it's a great gift item. So, namaste.